Cap Sprint, da PGET UFSC, e com a Poet, a Pós-Graduação em Estudos da Tradução da UFC, e essa organização da, da, da conferência de, de, do Arvi e do Felipe foi, foi organizada pela André Guerini e por mim. Então, eu vou apresentar ambos, Arvi fala primeiro, e depois é, Felipe. O assunto é o mesmo o título, da, eles vão falar de qualquer modo, o título da palestra deles é Anne Frank e seus suas tradutores tradutoras. É, e depois eles desenvolvem. O, o professor Philippe Emblé, o professor doutor Philippe Emblé, estudou filologia românica, francesa e espanhol na, na Universidade Católica de, Lu de Louvain. É, é doutor em língua e literatura inglesa pela Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina. Ele fez um sanduíche na, na University of Birmingham. Foi nosso colega, meu colega, é, durante 25 anos aqui no Departamento de Línguas e literaturas estrangeiras, ele pertenceu o curso de espanhol, onde ele lecionou língua e literatura espanhola, lexicografia bilíngua, estudos da tradução, e entre outros. Desde 2010, o professor Felipe leciona estudos da tradução espanhol e comunicação intercultural na Vrei Universidade de Brussels, na Bélgica. Felipe tem publicações, várias, algumas delas. Ele publicou sobre lexicografia, Dictionary and Language Learners, em 2001, é, estudos da tradução, literatura migrante, Barry Cross, Translating Literary Narratives of uh, Migration, 2016, estudos de corpora, comunicação intercultural em tradução, publicou em 2019, Transcultural Awareness in Translation Pedagogy, entre outras coisas. Atualmente, ele está pesquisando o impacto da tradução sobre questões geopolíticas, como exílio de escritores, é, Sandro Lenart, Robert Schoffrocker, é, Kader Abdola e os fluxos da tradução. Além do Brasil, da Bélgica, o professor Felipe ensinou na China, em Cuba e na República Tcheca. O professor Dr. Avicet, também presente na mesa, é, estudou filologia alemã e inglesa, sociologia e teoria literária em Leuven, Leuven la Neuve, Ber Ber Berlim e Gessen é professor de estudo de tradução e alemão na Vrede Universidade de Brussel, é pesquisador do Instituto de Estudos Judaicos da Universidade de Antuérpia, na Bélgica. Ele recebeu alguns prêmios, é, o Fritz Albert Fellowship Award do Instituto Leo Beck, o Tauber Institute Research Award da Universidade Brandeis, Memorial Foundation for Jewish Culture Award, o Prix de la Fondation Auschwitz, Prize for Research Communication, é, da Royal Flemish Society of Belgium for Arts and Sciences e o Theodor Frings Prize da Zexische Academy der Wissenschaften. Seus interesses de pesquisa estão centrados na literatura comparada, literatura alemã judaica do século XX, tradução literária, migração e exílio, literatura multilingue. Ele publicou também várias coisas, é, sobre estudo da tradução, estudos de autobiografia, literatura judaico-alemã e teoria literária. Publicou uh, em 2016 o livro Topography des Alltags, é, organizou várias revistas, entre as quais Bearing a Cross, Translating Literary Narratives of Immigration, 2016, e organizou várias edições temáticas da Oxford German Studies, sobre literaturas contemporâneas, periféricas em língua alemã, em 2019. É, passo a palavra a você, Felipe. I'll be give you the floor. É, Felipe, é, faremos as perguntas no final, e aí qualquer pergunta que o Arvi precisar é, traduzir, eu vou te pedir, claro que eu posso fazer, mas a gente vai se organizar um pouco, talvez. Você pode traduzir, eu estarei aqui para ajudar. É, e pode ser em qualquer língua que vocês entendam, neerlandês, alemão, inglês, francês, espanhol, e que mais? Português, italiano. italiano. Então, arbitre a parole. Je vous passe donc euh, la parole à tous les deux. Je vais éteindre mon micro. Éteindre mon micro. Voilà. À vous. Micro.
currently here. Uh, okay, so I think norm normally everyone should be able to uh, to hear me. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. <risos> então eu vou fazer a apresentação primeiro em, em português. Uh, a gente vai falar sobre um livro que é famosíssimo, não só uh, onde ele foi escrito, que é na Holanda, mas no mundo inteiro, inclusive no Brasil, onde foi vendido já milhões e milhões e milhões de exemplares. Eu acho que chega perto dos 20 milhões. Que é o, o Diário de Ana Frank, que... Uh, Acho que, em geral, as pessoas conhecem bem, inclusive as pessoas que normalmente não leem muito. Eu acho que uh, é um livro muito famoso e uh, ele foi, portanto, muito traduzido também, logicamente. Ele foi traduzido em... Uh, claro que essas, esses números são... A gente sempre pode se perguntar quem é que realmente contou esses números... Mas uh, se diz assim, até em 70 línguas que foi traduzido. Isso não importa tanto, só quer dizer que isso foi traduzido uh, para várias línguas. E, e, inclusive, as línguas que a gente vai conversar agora, que o, o, o Arvi vai dar uma, um panorama geral do livro, a maneira como ele foi tratado também ao longo dos, dos, uh, do, 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 do tempo desde quando ele foi publicado pela primeira vez, logo depois da, primeira guerra, da Segunda Guerra Mundial, que muitas vezes assim foi de uma maneira completamente diferente do que a gente pensaria de um, um diário que uma coisa um acontecimento de fato traumático que foi o Holocausto. Justamente por isso ele foi muitas vezes traduzido, ele foi muitas vezes traduzido também porque ele veio de uma língua realmente minoritária, que é a língua holandesa. O que foi o que aconteceu nessas primeiras traduções, isso é uma coisa que o Arvin vai falar primeiro, e depois, como a gente está no Brasil, eu vou uh, especificar um pouco mais, falar um pouco mais em, em detalhes sobre as traduções em português. Eu passo a palavra para o Arvin. Okay, yeah, so I will be uh, uh, very glad to be here. So I will be talking uh, to, in English, uh, but afterwards you can also, I mean, write your questions in Portuguese uh, uh, and I can, can understand, but I will be talking in, uh, in English. So I'm very glad uh, to be here um, and we will be showing uh, our screen now. Uh, so, uh, as uh, Philip uh, just uh, introduced, uh, I think most of you will uh, know the diary of, uh, of Anne Frank. Uh, of course, it was written in Dutch, but uh, well, it could also be considered German-Jewish literature because Anne Frank was German-Jewish, but she, uh, she lived in Amsterdam and she wrote a diary in uh, in, in Dutch. So uh, uh, I will first uh, give, give you some idea of, of the importance of the diary, um, say something about, uh, the, uh, about the English translation, about the German translation, a bit about the French translation, uh, and then uh, Philip uh, at, uh, will, will give you some information on the, um, on the reception of the diaries, uh, in, in, in Portuguese uh, translation. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as I said, so uh, let's start with the with the beginning. Uh, so um, the first. So I will be talking about the translations and the first uh, the first uh, uh, three translations uh, were the uh, were the the. French, the German, and the uh, English uh, translation, uh, and it was first published uh, in uh, in the Netherlands uh, in 1947, so two years after the after the Second World uh, War, and then the first translation, as I said, was in uh, was the French translation, in fact, in 1950, uh, and also in 1950 the German uh, translation, and then two years later the English or American 
uh, translation. Uh, so um, I would just make us we could be uh, we could be saying a lot about uh, about the diary just to give you an idea of of the importance of uh, of the diary and you will see that the United States uh, will play an enormous role uh, in uh, in the success of uh, of the diary uh, in in the global uh, global success of the diary and so it means that uh, the American translation in 1952 uh, was the basis of uh, a, um, how would I say, of, of, of a global reception. And of course, after the Second World War, there was, of course, the victory of the Allied forces. But of course, in the West, uh, the United States also culturally became even more dominant after the Second uh, World War. And we can see how this Americanization of popular culture or, or of Western culture yeah, became more and more uh, important then. And, and Anne Frank's diary is a kind of, of case of this, uh, well, of this first wave of, uh, of Americanization of, of, of European culture, of Western culture after the First World War. So uh, just to, uh, uh, to give you an idea, uh, it's a, also as, as, uh, as a way of, of introducing the, uh, the, the topic, uh, as I said, the first American translation was in 1952 with, uh, with an, uh, a preface by Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, and afterwards... Uh, the wife of the president. Yeah, the wife of, yeah. Wife of the president, yeah. Uh, and shortly afterwards, the, uh, through the translation, it became such a huge success that they had a play on Broadway, uh, a play on Broadway called The Diary of a Young Girl, Diary of Anne Frank. And uh, this is uh, Times Square. Of course, you all know uh, Times Square. And maybe the, the picture will, is, is too small, but... Uh, in, 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 in the corner, um, on, on the right, yeah, uh, to the, uh, on the top right, uh, there's a billboard poster. Probably you can't see this, but this is a billboard poster on Times Square uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, well, or on the, uh, the theatre piece, of, uh, of Anne Frank. So it is quite stri uh, striking because uh, there's, uh, there's this billboard uh, mm -hmm. on, on, on the Broadway uh, uh, spectacle on Anne Frank's diary next to just regular, yeah, uh, uh, regular, uh, well, uh, popular plays. Popular plays and, uh, and I think there's even Hot Talk Hot dog, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thing yeah. there. Yeah. So just to say that it, it has very quickly become part of popular culture because this is popular culture. When you make it to Times Square in 1956, I mean, this is no longer traumatic Holocaust literature. I mean, because it could be seen as a part, as, as also uh, depends on, on how you define, but part of, of Holocaust literature. Well, this is not the case. Yeah. So, and, and here, as I said, in 1952, with the introduction of uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, uh, so we can, we can read, and prefaces are always interesting, yeah, because they kind of frame, uh, uh, frame the narrative. She, uh, she writes, Anne Frank's book made me shockingly aware of the war's greatest evil, the degradation of the human spirit. But at the same time, Anne's diary made, made poignantly clear the ultimate, uh, ultimate shining nobility of that spirit. So wh what you already can see here is, well, seven years after the, after the Second World War, that, I mean, people did not yet talk about the Holocaust. They did not talk about, mm -hmm. uh, uh, about uh, Jewish suffering. It, it, it came much later, much later. Um, but in 1952, this was not yet the case. And let's not forget, I mean, Anne Frank, 
a young girl was murdered in a concentration camp. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, and I mean, the diary is a testimony to, uh, to German op occupation in the Netherlands, of course, but it kind of ends at a moment where she is deported to the camps to be murdered. Yeah? Uh, and in the introduction, we can already see this kind of uh, universal value. And Frank is not just a victim of of, of Nazi anti-Semitism and Nazi uh, Nazi genocide, but she becomes she becomes a symbol of uh, of everything that is good, yeah, a kind of angelic essence, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so there's what, nothing Jewish there. There's nothing Jewish there. Yeah, just mm -hmm. because it may seem just, I mean without importance, but uh, if you just have a look at uh, the words, a human spirit, greatest evil, nobility, uh, mm -hmm. ultimate, uh, ultimate shining, yeah, yeah, spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, this is a vocabulary, a discourse that is kind of uh, religious, that is more than, it is not about history anymore. Yeah, and, and this is very important. So, so the, 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 the main thing we want to say here now that is that the, 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 uh, the, the uh, early reception was very much influenced by uh, American culture and the way it was framed within American popular culture. Mm -hmm. And this young girl was, uh, uh, was portrayed mm -hmm. as a kind of, well, uh, uh, as a kind of pure essence of uh, pure essence of 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 uh, not of suffering, not of yeah uh, of yeah of human being of human uh, yeah, being yeah yeah and also they don't mention the the Germans but it's the war's greatest yeah. evil yeah yeah because it was yeah Cold War or yeah or yeah so. Uh, Indeed, the war is not mentioned, the Germans or the Nazis are not mentioned, the concentration camps uh -huh. are not mentioned, M murder is not mentioned because she was murdered, yeah? she did not just disappear, she was deported. So what you have is a kind of, as I said, universalization, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and on the, on the other hand, a kind of dehistoricization of what happens. Uh, I mean, the historical context just kind of disappears. Why? Because uh, early after the war, I mean, we could see that there was a kind of wish to move forward. Yeah? Yeah. And, and this whole discourse on suffering, on trauma, was not yet there, not that early. And we can see the same thing in all the traumatic events in history. It's, it's much later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, as I said, uh, when I showed you this uh, billboard uh, uh, on, on, uh, uh, on Times Square, yeah, uh, well, there was this display based on the on the, the American translation. Um, uh, so this play, the Diary of Anne Frank. And so this is the name. So the diary is clearly there. Right? So it is it is about about the diary, uh, and it was written by two. Uh, two American Hollywood screenwriters. Yeah, they were quite famous then in the early 50s, uh, uh, Francis Goodrich and, and Albert Hackett. Uh, so they kind of transformed the diary into a spectacle. Uh, and I mean, Broadway is spectacle. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's with music, it's dancing, yeah, etc. Uh, and uh, Otto Frank uh, and uh, father, uh, uh, he had a lot of influence yeah, because he uh, it, it, he was in fact, I mean, uh, the one who owned the rights of his daughter's diary. So it, it means that he was he was responsible. He had copyright, yeah. and so they had to ask him, yeah, what can we do with this play? So and he was the only one who survived. And he was the only one who survived. Yeah. So, so uh, it. In, in fact, uh, when when uh, Auschwitz was was liberated by by the by the Red Army, uh, there were about 
uh, 6,000, 6 to 7,000 people still there. Yeah? Uh, Auschwitz was, I mean, I don't want to go into details, but there were many who were sent on death marches. <laughs> yeah? So when the, when the Soviets liberated Auschwitz, there was six to 7,000 people there uh, who were deemed, I mean, too weak or yeah, who, well, they thought anyway, huh? they, will, uh, they will die. Uh, and who was there? Well, Otto Frank, but for example, also Primo Levi. Huh? Uh, he was also yeah, there. the Italian yeah. Yeah, right there. Yes. Also a very famous Italian uh, uh, Italian writer. Well, when we talk about Holocaust right. literature, I mean, he is very important too. So, but just to say that uh, he, uh, Otto Frank was the only member of the family who survived, who survived Auschwitz. Uh, and so he was responsible for the way uh, uh, his his uh, daughter's diary was was transformed yeah. in other in other media. Yeah. Uh, so and what is very strange is this is the playbill. Yeah. Uh, this is 1955, 1956. Yeah. So this is the Broadway uh, play. Uh, and what is very strange, yeah, well, to me, yeah. is that the play is called the Diary of Anne Frank. And who's on, on the, I mean, central, yeah, in, in the picture, yeah, of this, of this, of the, of the program, yeah, uh, it is uh, the actor. This is not not Otto Frank. This is the actor playing Otto Frank, and he's just like Otto. And Frank, he's, yeah. he looks very much yeah. like like Otto Frank, yeah. So you can kind so of the father became yeah. the main the main character. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see how, in fact, I mean, the father is really very central, not only in the diary, yeah, uh, but also in the way, I mean, Anne Frank's diary is, how would I say, marketed, and because it is, it is marketing. Yeah? Um, or, for example, here, I mean, this is, uh, this is these are posters and, and, and programs of the play. So this is, again, yeah, Broadway, 1955, 1956. Uh, and you can see, yeah, I mean, in fact, again, I mean, this is the diary of Anne Frank. I mean, Otto Frank shouldn't really be there. Yeah, it's, not yeah. about, it's not about him. Huh? And you can see, I mean, how lovingly his, his daughter... Yeah, uh, is towards uh, her father, but so this is, I mean, the the portrayal of uh, of Anne Frank and, and the diary. Yeah. So, and uh, in in uh, in the reception, uh, I mean, this has been remarked before. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a quote by by David Barnau. He's uh, he's a Dutch uh, scholar, and he's well. I think the the well, the most important uh, specialist of, of, of the diary. Yeah. And, and he writes, um, yeah, that it was more like Otto Frank's diary than Anne's in, in a way. Yeah. So it's, it, there are a couple of very interesting things coming together yeah, um, in, in the mid-50s. So there's the influence of the father, of Otto Frank, and then there's the specific American uh, American... Uh, mediation yeah, of uh, of uh, of Anne, Anne Frank's uh, writings. Yeah. Just uh, just to give you an idea, other uh, a few pages of the program. You know, if when you go to to, to theatre, uh, maybe before more than now, but you always got a program. Yeah, you've got a program with a kind of context and other things. But what is very striking too is that. Again, yeah, from the perspective of now, knowing what the Holocaust was, it is still very strange that, I mean, in uh, the program, you have this, uh, yeah. The, perfume, probably. Yeah, there's, no, there, there. There's, there's perfume, no, there's also, um, yeah, it's, it's also yeah, on, on wine, yeah, yeah. etc. Yeah. So what you can see is there's, uh, in the mid 50s, there's a de Judaization, which means, in fact, a dehistoricization. It means that, well, people were not yet ready to talk about, uh, about uh, 
about the, the, the details, uh, the details of the Holocaust, of, uh, of guilt, uh, of, yeah, of, of, uh, uh, of what, what the Holocaust was, uh, and also a very strong Americanization of, uh, yeah, uh, of the form. So um, also Peter Novick, for example, yeah, um, on, on the Holocaust in American life, yeah, writes that so the Broadway show is very un-Jewish. Yeah, mm -hmm. And uh, of course, there were uh, a lot of survivors, of Jewish survivors who, uh, well, who went to the United States. There was already a Jewish community in the United States mm -hmm. before, of course. Yeah, and. Uh, it was uh, it was very much to their displeasure to see that there was this de Judaization yeah. Yeah? Uh, because, because they they were not very religious they had no. Chanukah and, and yeah yeah they were culturally Jewish yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 they were culturally Jewish and of course uh, I mean people in the Holocaust were murdered because they were, because they were Jewish, Jewish yeah. Yeah? so I mean but not once the word Jewish is mentioned, or not in one play. in the play, or, or in, in the context. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the program, not once. Uh, Anne Frank is called a Jewish girl. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just uh -huh. not, not there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, as I said, so, so Otto Frank was, so had a strong, yeah, had a strong influence on, on the play. And so he did not want to overemphasize mm -hmm. the Jewish aspect. Yeah. Because why? Because if that's what, 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 what he thought, if the Jewish aspect would be overemphasized, uh, people uh, would not grasp, it would be seen as particular, as a, as a particular, as a particular mm -hmm. play, as a particular book for the Jewish community. And so his idea was, I mean, uh, if I want my daughter's uh, diary to be known, mm. it has to be universal. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh, and also, it was very important for him. I mean, that, and, and it, this is what happened, that, I mean, through the American success, yeah, there would be a kind of, uh, kind of translation back to Europe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because... I mean, it, it had already been translated in 1950 to, uh, in, into French and into German, but I mean, it was not in 1950 that the success came. And in the Netherlands, the book, I mean, the, the publication was in 1947, but no one, no one read huh, the diary. And then all of a sudden, 1952, the American translation, 1955, uh, 1956, the Broadway play, mm -hmm. which became a huge success. And it is only through this American success that there is a kind of, uh, of, of weight of American culture that says this is important. Yeah. Which we can still kind of see now. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, because they, they often make remakes yeah. of popular yeah. movies. Yeah. Yeah. For example, uh, but you know how it is. I, I know of a, a couple of, uh, of, of Japanese uh, movies. And, and mm -hmm. these movies are great, great yeah. movies. But then, no one knows them. But then there's an American remake. Yeah. Yeah? And through the American remake, it makes his way to Europe. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, I'm talking about Europe now yeah. because I'm talking about Anne Frank. But I mean, uh, it's global. It's not only yeah. Europe. It's, it's 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 everywhere. But it's through the the power, and this is soft power. Yeah, what what yeah. we I yeah. mean, <laughs> what, yeah. we we often yeah. use the term. Yeah, yeah? Uh, soft power means I mean the inf the cultural influence of a culture yeah? uh, that has become global, and it is through this uh, this American success. That people all over the world, the world say, well, if this is an American success, it must be important. Yeah. And and this is this is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so uh, also uh, Alvin uh, Rosenfeld is is a, a very well known uh, Holocaust scholar, and he writes with regard to uh, to this Broadway uh, play. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, he writes, it is notable, for instance, that at no time during Goodrich and Hackett's prize-winning play does a Nazi soldier or Gestapo agent ever appear on the stage. Yeah? Uh, and then at the end, yeah, uh, he writes, as in this instance, Americans are typically given stories and images of the Nazi Holocaust that turn upwards at the end rather than plunge downwards into the terrifying mm. silences of a gruesome death. Yeah? Because the play ends happily. Yeah? And uh, I mean, everyone's happy, everyone's dancing and singing at the end of the play, <laughs> which is frankly quite We're strange. going to say the same thing in the Portuguese translation. Yeah. Uh, so this is, I mean, so it would not be possible anymore. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's no dancing and there's no singing uh, by the ones murdered during the Holocaust. And this is what happens with Anne Frank. Yeah? Uh, so it, it, it ends literally with dancing and singing, uh, this play. Yeah? Uh, these are just other, uh, other posters. Yeah? Um, yeah, just, just to give you an idea of how it was, uh, how it was marketed. Yeah? Uh, so these are yeah uh, these are uh, more quotes yeah just uh, which go into the same direction yeah? again by by Rosenfeld in another book where he writes that there was a tendency to generalize Anne Frank's experience so that it becomes existential and not specifically historical yeah? mm -hmm. so no Nazis no Gestapo no concentration camps but something of pure human essence mm -hmm. yeah? something almost religious. Yeah? Um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, this this also comes from uh, yeah from uh, the from the diary, yeah, 1956. Yeah, and this is from the play. Yeah, uh, and and this comes at the end of the play. Yeah? And so, as I said, yeah, it, yeah. It, it it ends with dancing and singing, but there's also this well, almost religious. Yeah. Uh, Conclusion. Mm -hmm. yeah, this so so this was on stage yeah, where someone of the actors I don't remember who, who it was, uh, but we can read we're not the only people that had to suffer. Right down through the ages, there have been people that had to suffer. Sometimes one race, sometimes another. Mm -hmm. So again, you see this de-Judaization, yeah? and and very strangely or strangely enough. Uh, this is also what, uh, what at that time, in the 50s, the official historical discourse was in Germany. Namely, that it was war, and in war, during war, people die. And Germans died, and Jews died, and Russians died. But that's the way it is. Yeah? Uh, and you, all, you often have this with, with I mean, with, with when there's a kind of mixture of genocide and war. And also, I mean, we can hear the same thing uh, with regard to the Arme Armenian uh, genocide in, in Turkish media. They say, well, yeah, uh, yeah. during the war, yeah, I mean, yeah. People th that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah? And yeah, so this is very clear. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, documentary uh, now, yeah? still now. Yeah? It was a documentary in 2017. Uh, by uh, by a, a, a Dutch uh, filmmaker, uh, and it's very interesting because we can see see that in 2017. So this is now, yeah. Uh, this is yeah. Uh, current um, current situation. Uh, so people are queuing up in Amsterdam to visit uh, the uh, Anne Frank House, yeah, and they interview people. Yeah? And, and, and I mean, as you may know, I mean, Anne Frank, if you go to Amsterdam, uh, I mean, you have to book a visit to Anne Frank's, to the Anne Frank house, weeks in advance. I mean, this is one of the major, yeah, major uh, venues to, to visit yeah? in, in Amsterdam. And so I, there, I thought there was more than a million, yeah, a million a year. Yeah. Uh, and people from everywhere, yeah. Yeah? people from everywhere. And so uh, the documentary, uh, I mean, the, the filmmaker interviews, for example, an African-American man. Yeah? And they, he asks him, so why do you want to go visit mm -hmm. the Anne Frank house? And he says, well, 
I feel very much uh, uh, very much committed, yeah, because uh, African Americans were also uh, discriminated oh, yeah. against, and I can I can see how it is. I can yeah. feel how it is. Uh, and then, for example, there are uh, uh, Tibetan monks, yeah, uh, who want to go visit the Anne Frank House. Uh, and they they ask them, yeah, or, or the filmmaker asks them, why do you want to go to the Anne Frank House? And and they give a similar interpretation, but with regards to the Tibetan discrimination mm -hmm. in uh, in China. Uh, so there is a kind of so Anne Frank becomes a a symbol of victimhood. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Of of I mean, what what could a young girl? I mean. She wrote the, the diary between 13 and 15. Yeah. What could a young girl do wrong? Nothing. Not, not, not one young girl, a 13-year-old girl, could do anything wrong, could never deserve this. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so she becomes this, this symbol of victimhood, mm -hmm. of, of, of what bad people can do to good people. Yeah. That is that is what what uh, in fact yeah, Frank yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's 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 interesting. Uh, so uh, yeah. So, so even now there is nothing Jewish about her. Uh, well, not we'll, we'll see this, but in fact mm -hmm. we can see that, that that it still has this yeah has, has this importance because it is often read in schools and not only in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, if the teacher, I mean, wants to say something about the Holocaust, he or she can. But in general, it's not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a kind of, yeah. Uh, it is also also often read in the context of of, of, of religion, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in another uh, book, yeah, by by Levy and 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 Schneider, uh, we can we can see the same kind of. Conclusion, yeah, where they write the girl represents less and less a particular historical period defined by evil and more and more a message for the future that transcends the past. And so you can you can see this. Okay, I will skip this slide. Yeah. Uh, so it attracts uh, and it transnationally and transculturally, yeah? and and this is this is peculiar mm -hmm. because the situation is. So uh, specific, yeah. Uh, the the situation is so specific. I mean, it is a German Jewish girl uh, 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 who went into hiding in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, and 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 during the German occupation in the Netherlands, this girl wrote a diary. Uh, they were uh, they were caught, yeah. So they were betrayed, the family, and they were deported. This is a very particular situation, yeah. and still. I mean, Tibetan monks or African Americans mm -hmm. uh, or anyone, whatever continent, mm -hmm. create a kind of link. Yeah? This is and this shows in the translations, also. and this is also shown in the translations. Mm -hmm. And Philip will say yeah. something in the in the Portuguese mm -hmm. on the Portuguese translation. Yeah, because it's a more, more I think yeah. yeah. Uh, so what I said in. So th this is in Dutch. Het meisje Anne Frank, the girl Anne Frank, yeah, translated. Uh, as I said, it was first published in the Netherlands in 1947, yeah? but it was no success. It was no success. Yeah? But then it was translated into American English and was a great success in the United States. Then with the, the Broadway play, it's a huge success. Yeah. And then 1956, there is this kind of transmission or translation mm -hmm. of this success from the United States. I mean, so through yeah. through the translation, through the translation, to to make the Dutch aware that the original text is Dutch. important. Yeah. It's Dutch, and, Dutch, and, and it Dutch. is Dutch. Yes. Yeah. So the Americans say it's good, so yeah. and it's it's ours. Yeah. So, yeah. so what you have between 1947 and 1956, mm -hmm. yeah, in the Netherlands, yeah, there was very little interest, yeah, mm -hmm. in in this in this diary, 
Yeah? This is very interesting, yeah, because it says something about cultural hegemony after the Second yeah. World War. Mm-hmm. Of course, it says something about also remembering, remembering the Second World War and remembering yeah. the Holocaust. Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, but this is a, a Catholic magazine, yeah? uh, a Catholic magazine on, on, on again, on, on Anne Frank as this pure, uh, innocent girl. But it's, it's, it's a Catholic journal. It's not mm-hmm. about, about yeah. her Jewishness. It's about this young girl and, yeah, uh, and, 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 and even how young girls yeah. should, should be. Yeah. Yeah. So Anne Frank was a kind of example. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, again, um, in 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 this play, I mean, it is about universal goodness, yeah? and uh, her father Otto Frank is portrayed in a very positive way, uh, and the mother in a very negative way. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and you can see in the diary that there's a very strong yeah difference between good and bad. Yeah which may be expected, I mean, uh, at that age, of course. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah, kind of yeah, symbol of, of piety. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, but let's, uh, let's, go, uh, let's go back to, uh, uh, to, the, the, translation. Uh, to the translation. Uh, already, uh, so as I said, the German translation, so the first one, uh, had... Uh, uh, um, a, a run of 4,500 copies, mm-hmm. yeah? uh, which is already not bad, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for a first mm-hmm. run. Yeah? Uh, I mean, in, in, in West Germany, yeah? in the West, yeah? uh, because there was, was another translation in, in East Germany. But then we see in 1955, yeah? and this was already the moment where, uh, where it was, I mean, it was already a, an enormous success in the United States. Yeah? Mm-hmm. We can see the same thing, yeah, what happened in the Netherlands, but of course in the Netherlands it was not a translation, it was a success of the original text. Uh, and then in Germany we can see the same thing. I mean, in 1955 there's a new translation. It's a new translation. It's a new translation, translation. yeah. Uh, and w- with 100, uh, 104,000 copies. And it's not because the first uh, translation was, was well, uh, it was a publishing house that is not well known. A yeah, mm-hmm. small publishing house, Lambert Schneider. Yeah, no one knew this publishing yeah. house. But then in 1955, it was Fischer. And Fischer were, is still one of the major German publishing houses, yeah, uh, also for, for literature. So you can see uh, in five years, yeah, this enormous difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, not only a new publishing house, but, but I mean, it's, it's more than 20-fold. Yeah? Uh, the the number of, uh, of the, copies the, the Americans. Well, it is clear that you can see the same thing all over all yeah. over Europe. Yeah? Um, yeah, and then I mean uh, after the play uh, in, uh, on Broadway, uh, because not only was the American translation a huge success, not only was the uh, the Broadway play mm-hmm. an enormous success. Yeah. Four years later, so four years after the the the, 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 the first uh, first um, uh, first Broadway play, uh, there was a Hollywood movie, yeah, uh, and it was also an, an international success, yeah, because I mean at that time I mean Hollywood was I mean still is yeah, yeah. Still is, yeah. Uh, I mean uh, enormously influential. And so here you can see uh, uh, you can see the, the posters of, of the movie. So this is the movie, yeah. Uh, and it's 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 always interesting to see. I mean, how how the diary, how Anne Frank is is portrayed. Yeah. Uh, so if you can see on I mean on on the on the left, yeah. So you can see I mean George Stevens' production, the diary of Anne Frank, a 20th century fox. Uh, Presentation, and then you can see uh, the diary of, of a young girl, and then a deeply moving story of adolescence that has become a classic of our time. Yeah? So it is about yeah. adolescence, so, yeah, yeah? not it, about the war. It's not about the war. It's about yeah. adolescence, and not about Jewishness, and not about Jewishness. Yeah, and a classic of our time. This is, I mean, classic of our time. It's, it's, it's 59. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
It's 14 years after the end of, of the war and, and, and the Holocaust, uh, uh, and seven years after the American translation. Mm -hmm. yeah? But it is already a classic of our time. Mm -hmm. So you can see the enormous, yeah, I mean, the, the uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it is already part of the canon. Yeah? Mm -hmm. it, it, it has become already canonized. Yeah? Um, for example, I mean, to the right, yeah, that's another poster, but you can see, for example, you can see the family, yeah? Uh, I mean, it doesn't look very frightening, yeah? It could be a musical, yeah? It could, uh, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you yeah, look yeah. At, at, at the, uh, at, at, at the poster, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, and then, I mean, uh, on top you can see, uh, I mean, the actress who plays Anne Frank, yeah? Uh, kissing or almost kissing a boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you can see, uh, I mean, all the members of the family. It, it looks kind of... Yeah, it's like the, the sound of music. It's like, it's, it looks like and the sound of music. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, and yeah, so you, you can see, you can see what, is, what is going on. But maybe I will go a little bit uh, faster, uh, but just some examples yeah, of this universalization in popular culture. Mm. Yeah? For example, in Japan, yeah, uh, there's, uh, which also is, is quite strange. Yeah, uh, when we talk about with, and it, 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 talking about about uh, about menstruation, yeah, and tampons, yeah, uh, there's uh, there are there, or there were uh, tampons, yeah, uh, they, uh, and I mean the, the menstruation was called and day, yeah. Uh, why? Because again, uh, Anne Frank has become, even in Japan, a symbol of adolescence, of girlhood, yeah. mm -hmm. of pure girlhood. Yeah? Just as if uh, they want to say, well, this is angelic, mm -hmm. this, it's, it's perfectly fine, because Anne Frank also talks about menstruation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? And she talks about menstruation. She yeah. talks about yeah. menstruation in a diary. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, she talks about menstruation uh, in, in the diary, and and Frank at the same time is this kind of angelic, pure yeah, girl. Yeah? So there's a kind of yeah, detabuization because we're talking about Japan in the in in the 60s, 68. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I've just checked before before the uh, before this presentation uh, because I've I've looked it up. Yeah, and they, if if it is still used. Uh, and it is still yeah. used, yeah. And and I've seen there's a company called Andday, no, Andday Limited, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andday Limited, uh, and they also produce tampons. Not only tampons. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it is based in in the United Kingdom for uh, for the Asian market. Huh? <laughs> uh, okay, but I just uh, just wonder if, they, if this was still yeah. uh, still the case. Yeah. And of course. In, uh, in in Japanese mangas, uh, there's a huge production of mangas on Anne Frank. And again, I mean, this is not on the Holocaust. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. this is again on girlhood. Uh, yeah. This is what it means being a girl, whatever mm -hmm. it it means. And you can see, I mean, yeah, th this really this has nothing to do with with fear of death, yeah. fear of yeah, of being deported, uh, and uh, yeah, so this is this is Japanese and anime. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's even a book, a French book, yeah, on uh, Anne Frank, yeah, uh, in mangas, yeah, uh, in Japanese mangas, um, and it's it's well, it's yeah, it's. It's, it's very interesting because, of course, it is not about the Holocaust, but in Japan, it is about the fear of, or again, this, this universal uh, l linking yeah, of experience with Anne Frank. But in Japan, it's, it's this kind of feeling that they, they kind of had the same or had the same fear because because of Nagasaki and and, oh, and, yeah, and Hiroshima, yeah. Mm. yeah, because where 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 they are the victims, where they are the victims. Mm -hmm. Again, this is this similar victim, yeah. but it's mm -hmm. very strange, of course, that the Japanese, yeah, who were 
I mean, on the German side, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. allies, uh -huh. yeah, that the Japanese feel, uh, feel, 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 uh, I mean, solidarity with Anne Frank, who mm -hmm. was mur murdered because by of the Jewishness yeah. by, yeah, yeah. by the Nazis, mm -hmm. yeah. And 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 uh, yeah, this you, is the worst one actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're still talking about popular culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so this this influence that came into being in the fifties. Yeah, uh, uh, so as uh, as we said, this universalization of mm -hmm. of, of of Anne Frank. Yeah, a uh, couple of of years ago, I think it was you know, two thousand sixteen or seventeen. Uh, there was this uh, carnival. Uh, costume, yeah, uh, which you could buy and everywhere on Amazon, yeah. For example, I mean, on the on the left hand side, I mean, that's that's uh, that's a costume you could you could find on uh, on 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 Amazon, yeah. And this child's war, World War Two costume was, of course, I mean, the pictures we know of Anne Frank. Mm -hmm, yes. I mean, this is yeah. this is Anne Frank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how girls. Uh, 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 how, the, how how clothes were were in the 50, in the 40s, yeah. And uh, on the right hand side, you can see, uh, um, I mean, a page from uh, the Washington Times where we can see uh, whether the title is Anne Frank's design pulled from one costume website, still available by different name on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you you can see that this. Yeah, uh, really. Uh, I mean, part of, of mm. popular culture here in Amsterdam. I mean, uh, Anne Frank is associated with Amsterdam. Yeah, uh, and here you can see uh, an enormous uh, graffiti portrait of Anne Frank. Yeah, uh, highlighting diversity and openness. Yeah, you can see all the colors. Yeah, you can see. I mean, uh, so she also has become a symbol of of tolerance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to a multicultural society. And of course, mm -hmm. said, the, I mean, the diary had nothing to do with this. No. This is a construction, yeah. But you can see, I mean, how Anne Frank uh, has uh, has lost. Well, has lost. I mean, it's not about Anne Frank's personality. It's about how malleable mm -hmm. the, this construction is. Yeah. Uh, uh, here too, I mean, pop art uh, uh, on Anne Frank. This is about Amsterdam. Or here, for example, yeah, a, a picture of, of, of yeah, on Amsterdam. And so on the most important, yeah, uh, on the most important uh, venues in Amsterdam, and you can see a picture of Anne Frank, yeah, uh, um, almost centrally yeah, on on the uh, yeah, in the painting there. Okay. So of course you can you can see that this can also be criticized yeah? and and should be criticized and of course it has been criticized I mean from a Jewish perspective and already in sixty eight yeah uh, in sixty eight uh, with uh, I mean six day war war in in Israel uh, we we can see this this provocative publication yeah on uh, on 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 uh, the way Anne Frank is, is portrayed yeah. Uh, where we can read, uh, but it's provocative, of course. Yeah, um, uh, for for the neo anti semites, it is more complicated, but no less clear. Despite the fact that they have them, as long as we are are alive, yeah, so we that, that the Jews, as long as we are alive, we bother them. Once we are dead, they pity us. Anne Frank is dead. Long live Anne Frank. But only if she's dead. Yeah. So this is 68. Yeah. Uh, and they complain about, I mean, this solidarity of of the left with uh, with Palestine. Again, this is something we still know now. Yeah. At this very moment. Uh, but of course, there's what is criticised is this kind of hypocrisy with with regard to uh, to Jewish uh, suffering. Yeah. Uh, so, but this is a provocative uh, publication. Uh, maybe I will, I will um, go a little bit faster. Uh, this is on the, on the GDR. On, yeah. Uh, yeah, on, on the, you might talk about the, the uh, German translation. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to skip some slides yeah, because, uh, of course, as you know, after 49, uh, Germany was split yeah, 
uh, into the West and, and East. And there was uh, a, a translation in the West, yeah, in 1950 and then in 1955. Yeah. And there was a different translation in the East, yeah, uh, in East Germany. And it's interesting to see, of course, these prefaces are always very, yeah, very interesting. Yeah? Uh, uh, just, um, yeah. Well, and, and there uh, in the preface, so I will skip this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is all about yeah, all about uh, the, uh, the publication or the translation in, in, in East Germany. Uh, so and there we can see in the preface why Anne Frank is important. Uh, and there we can we can clearly see that Anne Frank or Anne Frank's diary is important because it shows how bad the Nazis were. were yeah? mm -hmm. Uh, and then it's very interesting that in East Germany, in East Germany, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, did I say West Germany? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. In, in East Germany, so it is clearly ideological. Yeah? So you should read the diary just to know how the Nazis were, yeah. and you should know that this girl was killed. So there is no dehistoricization in the East. Mm -hmm. yeah? Why? Because and there is a dehistoricization in the West. Yeah? In the East, I mean, the war is clearly there. Why? Because they say. This is what happened, and in the West, they still continue like this. No. Yeah? They don't talk about the Holocaust, they don't talk about the war, but we are anti-fascist. And you can see the same thing. Yeah? It's a very interesting documentary on Anne Frank in North Korea. Yeah? So in 2004, yeah, mm -hmm. Anne Frank's diary was translated into Korean. I mean, there was already a translation in South Korea, but in 2004, there was a translation in, in North Korea. And why? To fight the imperialist fascism of George Bush's USA. Yeah? Why? So the idea is that this course is, yeah. Yeah? Uh, Anne Frank was killed by Nazis. Nazis are fascists and Americans are also fascists. Yeah? So, and therefore, yeah, we read the diary and good people yeah, will be killed by fascists. Good people, innocent people will be killed by Americans too. Mm -hmm. So there you can see we North Koreans, we are Anne Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you can see, I mean, how... No mention of the Jews. Yeah, of course. No, no. Okay, just a couple, uh, a couple of, of, of uh, examples from, uh, from the diaries, yeah? So uh, there's a, um, from the translations of, of the diary. Uh, so there is in Germany, there's, in West Germany, there's a translation in uh, 1950, yeah? And then after the fall of the Berlin Wall, there's a, a new translation in 1991, yeah? By Miriam Pressler, uh, Anneliese Schütz, uh, the original translation, 1950, Miriam Pressler, 1991. Um, so, and, and uh, I will just uh, give, you, uh, give you some, some examples. Uh, in, uh, in the uh, translation in the fifth in 1950, yeah, uh, if you count the number yeah, of, uh, uh, of, of, of occurrences of the, the, of the lexical item Jewish, yeah, you, can see how, you can see how limited it is. It's a limited number. Yeah, it's much less than in the original. Yeah? Uh, for example, I mean, in Dutch, yeah? uh, so, I mean, um, on, top of, of the, 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 um, on top of the slide, you have in Dutch Hitler's Jewish laws. Yeah? And in the, uh, in the translation of the 50s, yeah? S means uh, Schutz, so the, the translator uh, who translated uh, the diary in 1950. So Jewish yeah, is deleted. Yeah? So Hitler's Jewish laws becomes in German Hitler's laws. Yeah? So Jewish just disappears. So th there is a literal dejudaization yeah, of Anne Frank in 1950. In 1991, uh, I mean, a Holocaust remembrance and, and, and the, the idea of German guilt has completely changed yeah? over, mm -hmm. over 40 years. Mm -hmm. yeah? And there you can see that the new translation yeah, and there we can see that Jewish appears again. Yeah? And so there's no, yeah, uh, there's no, uh, no deleting anymore of, uh, of, of, of Jewishness. Yeah? Uh, this is, uh, I mean, uh, on the left-hand side, you have the, the Dutch original, and on the right-hand side, 
you have uh, you have the translation uh, from 1950. Uh, you you don't have to understand. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, neither uh, Dutch nor, nor German. But uh, we have highlighted um, um, we have highlighted in in, in bold uh, Jordan Jords in Dutch. So this is Jewish, and just uh, in in the translation yeah, in in 1950, you can see. I mean, how many times. And Frank uses Jewish or Jews. Yeah? And in the German translation, yeah? uh, in the German translation in 1950, the same passage, you can see that in the same passage, I mean, almost all of the, uh, of the mentions of Jewish have disappeared. Yeah? Not all, but almost all. Yeah? Just to give you uh, an idea, I mean, from a, from a quantitative point of, uh, point of view. And again, this says something about the idea of German guilt yeah? and how important uh, uh, um, a reflection on uh, responsibility and Jewishness is for the, current, uh, for the current collective identity of Germany. It is, yeah. it, it is central. Yeah? Uh, and in, in 1950, well, there was still the discourse, well, everyone suffered, yeah? yeah. And, and, and there were millions of Germans killed and millions of German, Germans had to flee. And so it was a completely different, yeah. different uh, period. Yeah? yeah. So you can, you can clearly see this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, Anneliese Schutz, so the, the translator from, from, uh, from 1950, yeah? uh, in 1980, in an interview in Der Spiegel, yeah? she, uh, she, she said yeah? that, uh, well, because they asked her, I mean, why did you adapt the, the journal? I mean, it's yeah. clear already in 1980, it was clear that, I mean, it, it had changed. And she wrote, that in 1950, a book containing insults against Germans could not have been sold in Konrad Adenauer's Germany. Yeah? So Konrad Adenauer was... Because Western Germany. Yeah, in West Germany. Konrad Adenauer was the, uh, was the chancellor, the first yeah, federal chancellor yeah, of, of West Germany. And he strives for kind of normalization again of Germany in the West. Yeah? And, and there was not... There was no place then yeah, uh, to say that the Germans were bad, as, as Anne Frank wrote in a diary. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, for example, uh, another passage, and this will be the last one, and then Philip can, 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 oh, okay. can, can say something about, about the Portuguese uh, translations. So on the, on the left-hand side, so F is, uh, is, is uh, Frank, uh, Anne Frank. Yeah? Uh, and there's this passage where she writes, yeah, uh, that she is very much against the Germans, the Germans. She calls them the Germans. Yeah. Uh, in English, she writes, "Nowhere in the world is 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 there greater hostility than between the Germans and the Jews." Yeah. Then in 1950, so this is in the middle. Yeah. S means Schutz. Yeah. Uh, so the translator. Nowhere in the world is there greater hostility than between these Germans and the Jews. Mm -hmm. And then in 1991, it's by, by Pressler, it's again, again, yeah. Then between the Germans and mm -hmm. the Jews. Now this may seem without any importance, but it is very important. Yes, yes, of course. It is very important mm -hmm. because the Germans, that's collective. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's the, all the Germans. It's all the Germans. And when we talk about uh, guilt collective guilt. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Germany, there's a discourse that there was collective guilt mm -hmm. uh, because in the 1950s or right after the war, it was very much the discourse that there were these Nazi fools mm -hmm. or crazy people that kind of lured the German population. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Germans were victims. That's, that's what was yeah. said. Yeah. Uh, and so this was the discourse in, 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 until the 60s, even, even the mm -hmm. 70s, that in fact, yeah, uh, we all suffered. Yeah? And it was not the Germans. The Germans were, were good 
Well, almost all were, were, were good. They, they, they didn't, they didn't kill Jews. They didn't. Yeah, they were misled. They were misled. It was just a very small percentage, yeah, of very bad, crazy people. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, and so this, these Germans, yeah, uh, is this discourse. Uh-huh. Yeah? And then, of course, in 1991, it's again against the Germans and uh, and the Jews. Yeah? Okay, so. Um, yeah, I think because this is the, the conclusion, but it's, it's also um, yeah, uh, about, about the, the Portuguese translation. Uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, I think we can, we can oh, okay. go to, oh, okay, okay, okay. To, yeah. to the Portuguese translation. What this is this mine? Oh, I see, yes. So, um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, just a minute. Philip, você vai trocar na de, de slides agora, não é? Felipe, está me ouvindo? Então, eu vou falar agora das traduções em português. Uh, como vocês podem ver aqui, tem uh, várias traduções em português, o que pode surpreender. Mas isso mostra realmente que o livro foi um sucesso universal. Tem aqui as edições portuguesas, que tem aqui de, uh, uma de Ilse Lossa, que uh, é uma figura muito interessante, porque ela mesma foi, fugiu, de fato, de, da Alemanha como judia, já nos anos 30. E depois uma outra, desculpa, em 2006, muito tempo depois, de Elsa Vieira. Agora eu tenho que dizer que a edição da Ilse Lossa foi uma tradução que foi feita a partir da edição alemã, que, onde tem todas essas uh, transformações e uh, que realmente eles que tiram esse aspecto uh, judeu, uh, o aspecto alemão também, de fato, da, da obra original. Diz também que foi também consultado o original holandês, mas isso pessoalmente eu duvido um pouco. Uh, depois tem várias traduções em, uh, em português do Brasil. Eu achava que, bom, de certo, uh, eles copiaram uns, uns dos outros, mas não é sempre o caso, não. Então, uh, assim, foi... foi, foi uh, como é que eu vou dizer? Foi... Uh, Menos ruim do que eu pensava, porque normalmente os tradutores também, eles, logicamente, eles se inspiram um no outro. Né? Bom, então, uh, a gente tem aqui, uh, vamos ver aqui, o segundo. Tá, é, isso é da Vama. Bom, não, desculpa. Bom, então, eu queria, assim, uh, falar mais um pouco dos prefácios da, da, de Alan Frank. Eu não sei se dá para ver muito bem, talvez assim melhor. Uh, posso aumentar um pouco aqui também. Uh, ui, isso já foi demais. <risos> tá, vamos fazer aqui. Então, uh, os prefácios em geral, eu posso dizer que tem um prefácio, que é o prefácio original da versão em holandês, que foi escrito pela Annie Romain. Annie Romain, que vocês de certo não conhecem, mas que no mundo, uh, assim, quando se fala holandês, digamos, uh, uh, Bélgica e Holanda, é bastante conhecida porque ela era uma, uma historiadora famosa, de, uh, durante e depois da guerra. Então, uh, é bem surpreendente que ela fale essas coisas, uh, como eu traduzi aqui, não é? Uh, quem espera experimentar o milagre desse diário, devo decepcionar com antecedência. Esse diário não é um prodígio infantil, que é um pouco estranho, porque 
levando em conta, se você lê esse diário que foi escrito por uma menina de 13 anos, realmente é um pouco um prodígio. Não? E ela, é, é, o tom dela, em geral, é como diminuir, assim, não é tão importante assim. E ela, então, ela faz o, o, o panorama desse, desse livro, mas com uma coisa assim, é, é interessante assim para ler, mas não é nada fundamental. Não? No caso da Eucelosa, não, depois eu vou entrar mais em detalhe, no caso da Eucelosa, ela uh, sim fala de uma Anne que é um prodígio. Ela tem mais sensibilidade, eu acho, do que a uh, Anne Romain, para falar da, de, uh, da, da Ana Frank. Mas, ao mesmo tempo, ela também, embora sendo judia, que fugiu também da Alemanha, ela não parece ter nenhuma coisa assim de... Ela não quer vingança, talvez, não é? isso foi logo depois da Segunda Guerra Mundial, não quer vingança, respeita a tradução, de fato, um pouco mais... menos anti-alemã da primeira tradução alemã. E ela quer ver mais essa coisa assim da, da, da Amosran como um símbolo de falta de, 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 falta de solidariedade no mundo durante a guerra, mas que não foi só assim do, do, dos alemães e dos judeus, assim, isso não tem tanta coisa a ver, o que realmente é surpreendente quando se, se pensa que a Alessandra era uma, uma judia alemã. Né? Então, se vê aqui que, de fato, o mundo todo respeita, entre aspas, esse impulso, essa, essa, esse enfoque americano da Anna Frank. Os americanos que, logicamente, logo depois da Segunda Guerra Mundial, colaboraram bastante com não só cientistas alemães, que... Muitos foram para os Estados Unidos, mas também com as pessoas que se ocupavam com a inteligência alemã, a inteligência no sentido de, de espionagem, essas coisas assim. Né? Então, logo depois da Segunda Guerra Mundial, começa a Guerra Fria, então, de repente, os alemães não eram tão ruins assim, não é? E isso com pessoas que tinham, como a Ilse Lossa, que tinham, como é que vou dizer, que não, não queriam. Uh, atacar os americanos, mas nem os alemães, assim, foi um, foi um símbolo de paz, essas coisas assim, né? Mas se fala muito pouco no, no caso dramático, trágico, de fato, da Ana Frank. Né? Aí, quando a gente tem a Silvia Prado, não é? como eu já anotei aqui, é uma tradução infantilizante, hein? como a Jorge Amariano, também infantilizante, e depois a gente tem também graças a Deus, uma tradução como a do Ivanir Alves Calado, que é uma tradução muito boa. Eu mencionei aqui também que a Silvia Prado diz que o título original é Hut Achterhuis, mas como o holandês não é exatamente uma língua muito estudada no Brasil, a gente nunca sabe se ela traduziu realmente do inglês ou do holandês. Né? Os outros é, dois, Jorge Mariano e Ivania Alves Calado, eles é, admitem que eles traduziram do inglês, mas a Elia Ferreira Edel né, diz que também o título original é Hut Arturus. Logicamente, o título original é Hut Arturus, mas normalmente se quer dizer foi traduzido do holandês, e isso a gente pode duvidar um pouco. Vamos ver primeiro um, um, um prefácio concretamente, assim, que é o prefácio da, da Silvia Prado. A gente vai ver imediatamente do que, que se trata. Ela diz o sonho de Ana Frank era se tornar jornalista e escritora famosa. Não deu tempo, mas seu livro virou best-seller. Eu acho que todo mundo que entende um pouco de português... Não é? vai quase sentir um pouco de, de cinismo nessa primeira fase. Né? Não deu tempo. Não deu tempo nada. Ela simplesmente ela foi levada num campo de concentração. Não é que não deu tempo, que ela tinha outra coisa para fazer. não é 
Então, a Jimmy Fini foi, foi assassinada. E, e depois, como é, uma consolação, não é? Uma consolação, mais ser livro virou best-seller. É? E virou best-seller por quê? Porque é um tubilhão de emoções e conflitos, como qualquer adolescente. Exatamente como o Harvey falou também, né? Se torna, de repente, a um adolescente, modelo, assim. Então, você está uma comissão, né? As emoções, conflitos, é, como se isso fosse a coisa principal desse diário. E descreve as relações entre as oito pessoas é, confinadas. Depois, como a gente vê também é, nesse... É, do Broadway, não é? O amor que de repente, ou no filme, né? O amor desabrocha, não? Ela desabrocha para o, para o amor. Não é? É, tem esses conflitos de amor e ódio com seus pais, assim, adolescente, mas também o amor, não é? E depois, o que, que se espera de uma menina, é? uma garota observadora e tagarela? Nós conhecemos, tem uma coisa assim que a gente tem em comum, a gente se, se identifica, você pode se identificar, identificar imediatamente com ela. Né? Garota, observadora, tagarela. Ah, isso a gente conhece. E com mil planos para o dia em que a guerra acabasse. Mas, então, tem uma guerra também? Não é? Você pode se imaginar, isso é todo prefácio vai direcionado para um público infantil. Tem uma guerra, que não foi mencionada antes, mas que é a razão pela qual o livro foi escrito, o dia em que a guerra acabasse. Como se acabou mesmo? Agora, depois, vem uma quase uma frase que é para os pais, não é? o Diário de Anne Frank é um documento de referência sobre os horrores da Segunda Guerra Mundial. Qual, é, qual a conexão com o que veio antes? Só para quem conhece Anne Frank antes, mas normalmente o, a, o, o, o jovem leitor, ou a jovem leitora não vai entender isso aí, não é? Bom, então, é, o outro prefácio que também é muito interessante nesse sentido é o prefácio da Georgia Mariano. Aqui também, como vocês podem ver antes, também a Anne Frank era uma garota muito observadora. Então, ela fica olhando assim, porque não sabe exatamente, inteligente, que adorava escrever. Vocês vê que a frase toda ela vai direcionada para um público jovem. É uma maneira jovem de escrever. Quando fez 13 anos, ganhou um caderno de capa dura, que naquela época era usado para colecionar autógrafos. Colecionar autógrafos, tipicamente, para menina. Só que ela não faz isso. Ela, ela escreve um diário. Não? Bom, quando pulamos um pouco, aqui você vê que, pelo menos, se aparece a palavra judeu e aparece a palavra alemão. O que, na, no outro prefácio, nem aparecia. Então, eu fiz uma lista aqui né, do, do que, que me chamou a atenção, que a garota muito observadora, assim, assim que viu o presente, teve a ideia de usar, de fazer um diário. Né? É como, assim, descrever, é normal, né? como toda garota, assim, a gente tem tanta coisa em comum com a nossa né? Então, o que ela escreve? Tudo o que se passava na sua cabeça. Bom, isso, logicamente, assim, claro que você escreve o que passa na sua cabeça, não é? Claro, mas não tudo. É uma situação de guerra e são pessoas que durante dois anos ficaram num lugarzinho só, num, num, em alguns quadros só. Bom, depois, é, Confidência de uma adolescente, a perseguição de Hitler aos judeus se tornou insuportável. Isso é quase como, como de repente, assim, é, caiu uma chuva né, e depois é, se tornou insuportável. Né? Mas a perseguição insuportável realmente se matava a gente, na, na realidade. Né? E não era a perseguição de Hitler, era a perseguição dos alemães. Os alemães também desapareceram. O documento, o documento sobreviveu à guerra, ao holocausto e ao tempo. Então, guerra, 
Holocausto e tempo é mais ou menos a mesma coisa. Não é? Bom, primeiro, que guerra, que não se diz. Holocausto, bom, o que é holocausto? Se isso se dirige às crianças, como às adolescentes, como dá para ver. E também ao tempo, resistiu ao tempo, sobreviveu ao tempo. Não. O que é isso? A gente não sabe. Mas isso é tudo uma, um tipo de banalização da, da tradução que vai seguir depois desse prefácio. E, logicamente, depois tem um dos livros mais vendidos de todos os tempos. Bom, ok. E depois aparece o aspecto espetáculo, que a gente já viu de, uh, do, do, da peça de Broadway e o que a gente já viu do cinema, o filme. Né? Esse, espetáculo, esse aspecto espetáculo também é uh, realçado, porque se diz que foi traduzido para 60 idiomas, virou filme, peça de teatro, minissérie e uma coisa que as crianças vão adorar, desenho animado e história em quadrinhos. Então, o que a gente vê aqui é que uh, todo esse... Uh, uh, essa, essa, essa tradução, né? você traduzindo, você faz muito mais do que transformar um texto de uma, de uma língua numa outra língua. Isso a gente sabe. Né? Agora, nesse caso, é bastante importante porque a Ana, Ana Frank ela se tornou uma das pessoas que foram capazes ou que poderiam ser capazes de fazer viver na própria carne o que foi o holocausto. Não foi assim, nada de peça de teatro ou desenho animado. Não é? Isso foi uma coisa que, que, que foi muito além e foi muito especi especificamente uma coisa entre alemães e judeus naquela, naquele momento. Tudo isso, então, desaparece, desaparece nesses, nesses prefácios. E é tudo que colocar num determinado panorama. Graças a Deus, a gente tem uma, uma outra uh, tradução, que é essa aqui, da, do, do, do uh, Ivania Alves Calado. E aí você vê que o, 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 o tom é completamente diferente. Isso é a, a, a tradução que não é a última. Né? Então, é um, vocês dão, dá para ver que tem um certo vai-vem entre negar que se tratava de judeus e alemães e voltar justamente a esse tema, porque a melhor realmente é de Ivani Alves Calado. Ele fala, quando se fala no texto em judeus, ele fala em judeus, quando se fala em alemães, ele fala em alemães. Não é? Ele não fica usando uma palavra como judaico, que de repente sou um pouco melhor do que judeu, não é? Não, ele fala em judeu mesmo. As outras tradições, não. Falam em israelita ou judaico ou alguma coisa assim, como se para eles também judeu fosse uma palavra um pouquinho suja. Não é? Isso não acontece no Ivanir Alves Calado. Então, a gente poderia pensar que, é, é, depois de, de ter uma tradução definitiva, que não vão aparecer mais outras vamos dizer, ruins, não é? mas não é assim, não é assim. Então, dependendo do público-alvo, se traduz de uma maneira diferente, e o prefácio já indica isso também. Eu acho que a Anne Frank, nesse sentido, uh, esse... pode render muitos estudos ainda. Como a Ivy também falou, uh, tem essa coisa assim da americanização, que de repente... Uh, surgiu depois da Segunda Guerra Mundial, esse soft power dos americanos apareceu, como se o resto do mundo, a partir de certo momento, precisa do aval americano para achar alguma coisa boa, achar alguma coisa digna de ser traduzida e apreciada. Isso eu acho que também é uma, uma lição que a gente pode tirar dessas traduções. É... Eu acho que a gente pode encerrar aqui. Não sei se alguém tem alguma é, pergunta ainda. Eu acho que eu vou passar a palavra de novo para 
Marie-Hélène. Obrigada, Felipe. É, adoramos a, a conferência de vocês. É, teve muito, muitos recados no YouTube né? do, do Walter Costa, do Júlio, né? que é Júlio Monteiro. É, tem, tem vários professores presentes também na, na Assembleia. O Júlio fez uma propaganda, não sei se o, o Arley... É, Gostaria de... Acho que a gente vai aguardar um pouco acabar é, no YouTube. Não sei se acabou. O YouTube tem uma decalagem né? entre nós e, e a... Nosso, nossa fala no Zoom. Entende? Vamos, on va attendre un peu, uh, Harvey, parce que o YouTube a uma decalagem avec nous. Eles são um pouco en arrière, mas eu não sou pas sûr que isso soit fini. Euh, je, je vais te passer de toute façon, Harvey, la, la question et la question de, de, de Julio, euh, qui demande si euh, tu trouves que les... Les gars comme elle. Pardon. Si tu trouves que les différentes traductions, vous deux, hein, de toute façon, je crois que vous pouvez répondre à la question de Julio. Euh, euh, si vous trouvez que les différentes traductions danne Frank euh, présentent une Anne Frank plus naturalisée, mais entre guillemets, c'est-à-dire euh, une Anne Frank brésilienne, une Anne Frank coréenne, japonaise, comme dans les, les, divers, euh, les, les, divers, les, les diverses couvertures que tu nous as montrées, Harvey, euh, de, en traduction. Donc, si dans les, les, ces traductions, donc... Euh, c'est les traducteurs ou les plutôt les moi j'ai remarqué que c'était plutôt les traductrices hein, je vais compléter un peu la, la question de Julio pour en faire une une seule c'est à, à Paris Vanir ce sont des traductrices en tout cas les premières traductions là, des années 50 la française l'allemande la, et la plus de la troisième euh, est-ce que ce sont des traductions plus plus adaptées au public dans lequel c'est traduit je ne sais pas si vous avez entendu ma question. Plus, plus ou moins, j'ai vu que mon micro était un peu fermé à une époque. Ça va, Harvey tu, 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 tu... Euh, J'ai pas, pas, plus ou moins entendu, euh, mais pas par l'ordinateur, parce que tu, euh, tu es à côté. Euh, j'ai euh, donc la, la question. Euh, donc la question. Tu peux, tu peux sur... peut-être répondre en anglais, si tu veux, pour le public. Ah oui, oui. Euh, si, si les traductions sont naturalisées, que tu as étudié, que tu nous as présenté, ah, et, oui, et, le oui, fait, oui. et le fait que ce soit des traductrices, la, pour la plupart, hein, si ça a une influence ou pas, ou, je ne sais pas si tu veux parler là-dessus. Oui, yeah. ok. Oui, je veux dire, c'est une très bonne question. Donc, d'abord, nous avons eu l'impression que les traductions sont Uh, being uh, uh, well naturalized, uh, um, um, and 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 with regard to also the the, the issue of of, of gender. Yeah? Uh, well, I can uh, so with regard to the uh, uh, to the German translation in in 1950. Well. Of course, if if we use the, the the terms well domestication and foreignization, I don't know if it's if it's about this. Of course, we can we can clearly see that I mean the early translations are are are, are domesticated. Yeah, it means that they are completely oriented uh, towards the uh, uh, towards uh, I mean the, 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 to Germany in in 1950. Um, um, And the United States in 19, uh, 1950. Uh, I must say, uh, I mean, I have read the French uh, translation, but uh, I, I don't particularly remember. I mean, how, uh, how the, uh, I mean, how the translation uh, was in in 1950. But I can say, with regard to the German translation and the American translation, it was very clearly. I mean. Uh, Uh, a, a translation 
which was meant for a German audience and for an American an audience and and I mean that's what what you you may have seen during our our, our talk I mean that the, the fact that there was a dehistoricization and, and a de Judaization uh, it it kind of uh, I mean strikingly and a bit paradoxically uh, it, it 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 was in accordance both with uh, the American and the German memorial culture with regard to the Holocaust, uh, because in Germany, I mean, there was this, this very strong focus on starting all over again, on starting all over again. Uh, and of course, uh, and I mean, now there's much more uh, focus on, 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 on German suffering again during, during the Second World War, but also in the 1950s. Yeah, because uh, I mean, you had 12 millions of of, of Germans uh, who were, uh, I mean, uh, who who fled, I mean, the eastern parts of, of of Germany, and they all had their stories, and they were very much involved with coming to terms with this new Germany, with a new situation, and there was, uh, and you could see this in the translation. Same thing in in the United States. Uh, but very differently, of course, but that's why it's, it's paradoxical. Uh, and with regards to the, uh, I mean, to the, to the gender 